This is HTV West. Now, with the time at 10 o'clock, we go over to the studios of ITN for the latest international news. Mrs. Thatcher says there'll be no change in her policies. An interim deal on teachers' pay in England and Wales. The Russian reactor fire is out, the experts say. ITV is first with the all-night show. Princess Diana tries a Japanese kimono for size. Good evening. Mrs. Thatcher, speaking after the Conservatives' worst election results since she became leader, said tonight, the policies are right, but we've got to sort out education. She was leaving for checkers amid party calls for changes after setbacks in two by-elections and the local government polls. Labour says her own Finchley seat is now on its target list. In the by-elections, the swing that brought the Liberals' victory in Rydale was 18.9% away from the Conservatives. Mrs Elizabeth Shields, the Liberals' first woman in Parliament since Lady Megan Lloyd George, had a majority of 4,940, overturning a Tory majority of more than 16,000. In West Derbyshire, where the Liberals just missed, the swing from the government was 14.4%. After three recounts, Mr Patrick McLaughlin scraped home for the Conservatives with a majority of 100. It had been 15,300. In the local elections, the big gains were for Labour. The Conservatives lost more than 700 council seats, two-thirds of them to Labour. With almost all the results in, Labour have taken control of at least 17 councils, with the Tories losing heavily in Scotland and in London. The row over Militant in Liverpool cost Labour only one seat. Mr Derek Hatton said it showed Militant was the opposite of a liability. And in North London, the Haringey leader, Mr Bernie Grant, increased his majority. The Prime Minister left number 10 tonight with plenty to think about over the weekend at Chequers. In an interview with ITN Simon Cole before she left, she singled out education as something the government must sort out quickly. We're very concerned ourselves about the way education's gone. We're very concerned about the teachers' strike and that we haven't quite got the standards right, struggle as we may. Well, of course, we will have to sort that out and we'll set about doing it. Can we expect perhaps some cabinet changes in education? Well, goodness me, uh, Sir Keith, as you know, is not standing at the next election, so sooner or later there would be some, but in our own good time. You once said the lady's not returning. Still the same? That's right. That's right. No, the policies are right. The broad general policies are right. Uh, indeed, I, I think a number of people, I say, have voted in some of the constituencies about particular things. Of course, they're concerned about those, and of course, the particular things dominate. When it comes to a general election, you have to vote on the broad general policy, the broad achievements, the direction in which you're going, and the kind of vision you see for the future. It is a totally different kind of election from that which we've seen. I would have preferred to have won both parliamentary seats. Of course we would. People in both seats work just as hard, and of course I telephoned them this morning, and we're immensely grateful to them for their hard work, and they'll continue working hard. We're a team, and we're a good team. Prime Minister, thank you. So, Mrs Thatcher is apparently determined to tough it out, but tonight some Tory MPs are already holding her responsible for the losses. Jerry Hayes says the reasons for the party's failures is that the image is so hard-nosed and insensitive. And Alan Hazelhurst says the electorate feels the Prime Minister's personality is a little bit domineering and overriding. In the Rydale by-election, antagonism to Mrs Thatcher was only one factor in the Tories' defeat. Concern over declining local and national services like buses and education and disgruntled farmers combined to cause the massive switch of votes from the Tory mer merchant banker to the Liberal. Shields, Elizabeth Lewis, 27,000... <laughs> feel that it's time for a change. They are satisfied with the way uh, they've been treated by the present government and they're at last beginning to revolt. And I think this is a chance for many another constituency to do the same thing. David Steele showed up in Yorkshire today to congratulate Mrs Shields, who's done much to restore Alliance credibility. 
In West Derbyshire, there was a much more prolonged agony. It took three recounts until 6.30 this morning to reveal how little was left of a Tory's 15,000 margin at the general election. Patrick Alan McLaughlin. Conservative. 19,896. Christopher Walmsley. Liberal Alliance. 19,796. Today, Mr. McLaughlin, a former miner who defied the pickets, explained why he nearly lost. I think education and rates are the two issues in which uh, she, uh, which I will be taking back to the Prime Minister. Because she says the lady's not for turning. Has she got to make a turn, do you think? No, not at all. It's not a matter of turning. It's a matter of getting some very fundamental problems sorted out. Those are two terrible results for Mrs. Thatcher and the Conservatives. They are also fairly typical by-election setbacks for an unpopular government halfway through its period of office. Labour save local elections with many times the number of voters give a much truer picture and that if repeated at a general election, they'd give Labour victory. Mrs. Thatcher did have very bad local results in 1981 and two years later she won an overwhelming victory at the general election. But in between came the Falklands War. And in 1987 or 88, Mrs. Thatcher will be facing a much more potent Labour challenge. Both Labour and Liberal leaders are greatly encouraged by these results. In the midterm blues, rejection uh, or uh, resentment against Mrs. Thatcher and the policies, this is part of a continuous uh, rejection of what she stands for and what she's doing to the country.